Our topic in this video is your Rule 23, particularly the other mode of taking your deposition and that is the oral examination. Just to recap, para hindi makalimutan, depositions are classified into two. Number one is deposition, the Beni Essi, that is your Rule 23. And number two is deposition, Perpetuum Rei Memoriam, and that is your Rule 24. Do not forget also your deposition officer. If the deposition is to be conducted in the Philippines, then sino ang pwedeng maging deposition officer? Answer is judges, notary public, or any person as long as that person is authorized to administer oath and there is a stipulation in writing by the parties. How about if the deposition is to be conducted in a foreign country, meaning to say outside of the Philippines, then iba din ang pwedeng maging deposition officer. He could be the consul, vice consul, consul general, consul, consular agent of the Republic of the Philippines, or the secretary of embassy or legation, and you have to notify them. You, give, you must give them a notice. Sino pa? A person or officer appointed as long as they are appointed in the commission or letters rogatory. So, ano ulit ang letters rogatory? That is a request to a foreign court. Number three is any person. Again, as long as this person is authorized to administer oath and there is a stipulation in writing by the parties. Your deposition officer is a favorite bar topic. Kaya dapat arali ng mabuti. Meron akong separate video about your deposition officer. Just check it out in the playlist. So we will go now to the procedure. What is the first step? You need to file an ex parte motion to take the deposition of a person. What is our basis? This is very clear according to your section 1 of your rule 23. You are now allowed under the amendments of 2019, you are now allowed to file an ex parte motion. But how about if the person is confined in prison, then you need the uh, leave of court. You need to file a motion with leave of court to take the deposition of that person who is confined in prison. Basis that is again your section 1 of your rule 23. So what will happen next? Yung party na nag-file ng ex parte motion must give or furnish reasonable notice in writing to the other party to the action basis. That is your section 15, rule 23. Very clear, a party desiring to take the deposition of any person upon oral examination shall give reasonable notice in writing to every other party to the action. Take note also of your section 17. Ano ang sinasabi ng section 17? In lieu of participating in the oral examination, parties served with notice of taking a deposition may transmit written interrogatory. So instead of oral examination, pwede niya gawing written interrogatories. He will transmit written interrogatories to the deposition officer and that deposition officer shall propound them to the witness and record the answers verbatim. So after serving notice, what will happen next? Any of the parties can file a motion, a motion to enlarge or shorten the time stated in the notice basis that is your section 15 of your rule 23. What else can the party file? They can also file a motion for the issuance of protection orders. That is very clear according to your section 16. Just take note, yung protection orders, dalawa lang yan. It's either the deposition shall not be taken or it will not push through or number two, the deposition will be taken or it will push through but with certain conditions. You will impose conditions. What else can you file? You can file also your objection as to the disqualification of the deposition officer. Basis, you read section 29 of your rule 23. If ever you have objections to the taking of a deposition because of the disqualification of the officer before whom it is to be taken, then you have to make your objection before the taking of the deposition begins. So what else can you file? 
Recall your Section 1 of your Rule 23, the attendance of witnesses may be compelled by the use of a subpoena. Therefore, you can go to the court and ask for the issuance of a subpoena para i-compel si deponent or si witness na mag-testify at mag, hindi lamang mag-attend at mag-testify during the deposition. Just take note ha, itong pinag-uusapan natin na ex parte motion, notice, yung section 15, section 16, section 18, as well as this subpoena, I already explained this in detail sa mga previous videos. I already posted videos about the deposition officer, the process of deposition taking, as well as the written interrogatories. Kaya, ang premise dito, dapat na panood mo na yun lahat kasi na-discuss ko na yun in detail dun sa mga past videos. Mas madali na ninyong maintindihan at mas mabilis na ngayon ang takbo ng discussion. I already laid the foundation. Just check my playlist. After this, what will happen next? Magkakaroon na ng deposition taking. And if you recall, what is the procedure or what is the process during the deposition taking? First, the deposition officer shall put the witness or the deponent on oath. After this, magkakaroon na ng tanungan portion. How do you go the, um, how do you conduct the, the, the tanungan portion? Madali lang. First is you conduct the direct examination, then the cross-examination, redirect examination, and the re-cross-examination. Kagaya lang kung paano ka magtatanong ng isang witness na nasa korte. Basis, that is your section 3 of your rule 23, examination and cross-examination of deponents may proceed as permitted at the trial under sections 3 to 18 of your rule 132. So, what are the questions that you can ask the witness during the uh, tanungan portion? Again, remember ha, that this is an oral examination. So, the questions are uh, being asked during the taking of the deposition itself. Hindi kagaya ng written interrogatories na yung mga questions are prepared already before the deposition taking. They were prepared before. Here, Actual, tinatanong mismo yung deponent actual at the moment. So, according to section 2 of your rule 23, the deponent may be examined regarding any matter. Regarding any matter as long as that matter is not privileged and it is relevant to the subject of the pending action. Ano pa ang pwedeng mangyari during, during ha, take note, during the deposition taking, take note that you can go to the court and file a motion, motion to terminate the deposition or to limit the examination or to limit the questioning. So, since the deposition is through an oral examination, meaning the questions are being asked at the moment or during the deposition taking, then Pag sa tingin mo ay binabastos na yung witness or yung deponent or yung the questions asked are already annoying, then what you can do is again, go to the court and ask the court to either terminate the deposition or to limit the examination. Again, if there is a showing that the examination is being conducted in bad faith or it is conducted in a manner that is uh, that annoys or embarrass or oppress the deponent or party, then your remedy is to file a motion to terminate or limit examination. You have to do this during the taking of the deposition. And what is the requirement of the law? There must be a motion or petition filed and take note, hindi mo kailangan bumalik dun sa korte kung saan nakapending yung case. You can file it also in the RTC of the place where the deposition position is being taken. So what will happen if the court will grant your motion? The court will now terminate the deposition. According to section 18, if the order made terminates the examination, then it shall be resumed thereafter only upon the order of the court in which the action is pending. Paano naman kung magkakafile mo pa lang ng motion, kakafile mo pa lang nitong motion, then what you can do is you can demand 
the, the deponent or the objecting party can demand that the taking of the deposition shall be suspended for the time necessary for the court to make that order. And in granting or refusing such order, the court may impose upon either party or upon the witness the requirement to pay such cost or expenses as the court may deem reasonable. Pag natapos na ang tanungan portion, what will happen next? Ipapabasa ngayon yung transcript kay deponent at papipirmahan kung yon ay okay na. After this, the deposition officer shall securely seal the deposition in an envelope and then promptly file it with the court in which the action is pending or send it by registered mail to the clerk for filing. So last stage, after ma-file ni deposition officer yung uh, deposition sa court, then his duty now is to give um, notice of its filing to all of the parties. After that, if merong uh, party na gustong makakuha ng kopya ng deposition, pwede naman as long as he will pay the reasonable charges therefore. So if you want to compare written interrogatories from your oral examination, more or less the procedure is the same. Saan lang sila nagkakaiba? Nagkakaiba lang sila sa tanungan portion. Because if it is through an oral examination, then the questions are asked at the moment during the deposition taking itself. That is why you can go to the court and ask the court to terminate or limit the examination. Whereas in your written interrogatories, the questions are prepared beforehand or they are prepared together with the, the questions, together with the objections, are prepared before the deposition taking. Kaya kung meron ka mang ways to protect your deponent or to protect your witness, then you have to file it also before the deposition taking begins. Itong written interrogatories as ay mostly ginagamit pag ang deposition is to be conducted in a foreign country kasi mas magastos nga naman on the part of the client kung siya pupunta pa ng US or ipapadala niya ang kanyang uh, lawyer sa Amerika, swerte ni lawyer no kung ipapadala siya para mag-attend sa deposition kaya this is popular if the deposition is to be taken outside of the uh, Philippines or outside of the country. Just take note though of your subpina kasi ang subpina kung yan ay gagawin sa ibang bansa therefore baka hindi applicable that is the beauty sana of your letters rogatory kung aaksyonan ng foreign court ang uh, ang letters rogatory then mas maganda kasi si foreign court na ngayon ang mag-iissue ng subpina but that is not always the case as what was observed by the Supreme Court